We need to teach all women to know their value and to communicate it effectively. It's one thing to know it, but you've got to be able to say it. I need you to say something to me. I am not ashamed, and it's all about the money. <laughs> Let's all say it. I am not ashamed, and it's all about the money. The unbelievably successful women in this room, you can know that this runway is made for you, and it is longer than you can ever imagine. What really inspires me is that previously it was thought that first ladies are just soft power, but we, can, we have shown that it is not just a formality. We are a force, and we can continue to change the world. Every one of us is an influencer. So everything you do does matter. You can do this. This is your chance to change the world. I just want us to value laughter more. It is the only emotion that cannot be compelled. Be willing to do whatever it takes to feel confident that you know whatever it is you're talking about and you have a very clear uh, idea that you want to communicate. Well, those were just some of the highlights from last year's Forbes and Know Your Value 3050 Summit, including part of my iconic conversation with Ukraine's First Lady, Olena Zelenska, tennis icon, Billie Jean King, women's rights activist, Gloria Steinem, and former U.S. Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. And we are now just days away from our third annual summit in Abu Dhabi, taking place over International Women's Day. Tuesday, March 5th through Friday the 8th. And the event offers an unparalleled experience in cross-cultural and intergenerational networking between powerful women promising a new level of personal and professional impact for every single woman who attends. Here to discuss is Huma Abedin. She is vice chair of the 3050 Summit an MSNBC contributor, and of course, the co-host of Morning Mika. Today, also with us, we have Maggie McGrath, editor of Forest Women, Women and a driving force behind our incredible summit. So, are we ready? Everybody ready? It's all good, right? We're ready. So, we're all great. I'm uh, excited. So can't excited. Wait. I mean, the first two were remarkable, but this year we are growing, Huma, if you can believe it. It's unbelievable. We have women from 40 different countries who will be in attendance. So tell us about some of the women who will be taking the stage. You know, I think the impact is just, it's the conference, this, the summit speaks for itself at this point in terms of the, the, the range of women leaders who are coming. And this year we have Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, uh, who made history as the first democratically elected uh, female president in Africa, Nobel Peace Prize laureate, and still a leader uh, in women's leadership space. We have um, Sophie uh, Gregoire Trudeau coming, who is the former unofficial First Lady of Canada, but really is a, um, a mental health, an emotional and psychological advocate of the belief that young people middle-aged people throughout your whole life, how do you solve for some of the challenges de dealing with mental health? We have Shania Twain coming, who remains uh, the top-selling country pop artist of all time. Uh, she's a five-time Grammy Award winner. She is joining us on stage. She'll be in conversation with you, but hearing about her experience is going to be really uh, exciting and interesting. And then um, I think many people's personal favorite, Susie Orman, is coming. She is a finance guru, genius. Uh, she has made Made millions of four women in this country and you know around the world I think because she's taught us to your point um, Mika as you keep reminding us the importance of talking about money knowing about money knowing how to make money invest money and not to have shame around money is so important so these are just some of the uh, extraordinary women who will be taking the stage with us next week and can't wait to hear from all of them you know as we get to year three I can honestly say the 3050 summit is remarkable and it's always so great to share ideas and attitudes and viewpoints yeah. about knowing your value. I like sharing the message of knowing your value to a cross-cultural, intergenerational audience and really teaching women how to get value back in every relationship in their life, whether yeah. it's work or home or in friendship or in life and how to have impact with that value. Maggie, networking and mentoring is always a huge part of our event. Deals and connections that otherwise 
would not have been possible were made in years past. What do you what are we building on this year uh, on the networking front, um, especially given the success stories that we already have? There's so many success stories. I've heard of people hiring each other after they meet each other at the summit, but I have three very specific stories I want to share with you that really illustrate what is possible at the summit, and each looks at a different generation. So we always do our day of service at a local high school, Cranley, and the folks at Cranley have told us that the women from their school, the young female students who have attended our programming, tend to show higher confidence and more interest in leadership roles at the school after having come to 3050. So these are teenagers. This is Gen Z that we are inspiring. So we'd love to hear that. Last year, this is the second story, I talked to a member of the 30 Under 30 community. She works in chemical engineering, and she said that her company is so male-dominated that she didn't really have a mentor at her organization. She told me she met someone on the first day of 3050 last year who will become and is her person, her professional person. And then, of course, we have the over 50 founders of Vontel Eyewear. They were in invited to the summit by Kelly Clarkson on the Kelly Clarkson show. They are uh, Nancy Harris and Tracy Green. And, you know, they ended up sitting at breakfast next to Billie Jean King, and they started bonding over the one-size-fits-all history of the eyewear category. And they were all kind of complaining, one size does not fits all. So uh, the Vontel founders gave Billie Jean King a bespoke pair of their glasses, and they said it was just an incredible entrepreneurial experience. So those are three uh, examples of what can happen and what we hope to see this year. Huma, you're going to be moderating a number of conversations, including one on female entrepreneurs uh, and also on the mental health crisis. What are you looking for? Well, you know, to two conversations. The first in entrepreneurship is two women who are in the business of how. Very creative minds, different generations, if you will. So one is a conversation with uh, Stacey Bendit, who is the founder of Alice and Olivia. And here is this woman in her early 20s took a pair of jeans and decided that she was going to design them, make them more interesting. And she has built that into a, fa a global fashion powerhouse. I have friends who are in their 50s and 60s who love wearing Alice and Olivia. And I have friends who are in their uh, 20s and 30s who love wearing Alice and Olivia. And one of the things about Stacy that is, you know, I'm curious to hear about is how she's constantly pushing herself, whether it's finding mm -hmm. new collaborations. She did a really interesting collaboration with the Basquiat um, found, you know, Family Foundation and the creativity, the prints, the, the, you know, pushing herself. And now I just learned that she's about to launch a teen line. And I love her uh, focus also on mental health. And she will be in conversation um, with a young designer, an Emirati designer named Sarah Tamimi who I'm really, uh, I feel very kindred spirit. She talks about as a little girl, she knew she was going to be a fashion designer. She loved fabric. She loved the art of making things, the how, the craft, honoring the past while making contemporary designs. And what I really want to learn from her is, you know, she manufactures her clothing in Ukraine and how that's impacted her business. How do these women actually not just do the creative piece, but how do they build and they grow their business and inspire uh, women around the world? The second uh, panel that I'm, I mean, really uh, can't wait wait to talk to these two women together, but we talk about the mental health crisis as being a global crisis. And it is, and you have two women. One is Her, her Highness uh, Sheikha Basmal Saeed, who is a, a member of the Omani royal family, but she's also broken uh, a lot of uncomfortable barriers, even in her own country, where she's talked about the challenge of mental health. She practices hypnotherapy. So these are women who are not just identifying a problem, but also the solution, talking about it, uh, talking about these uncomfortable things, and they have a prescription. So it's identifying, treat, and preventing, and so she will be in conversation with Sophie Trudeau, who is uh, the former unofficial First Lady of Canada, but also an author talking about her, about her book, Closer, that comes out this spring. She is somebody who talks very honestly about her own challenges um, with mental health, with uh, an eating disorder that she has uh, battled her whole life. But talked about it with a lot of kind of honesty and clarity and really uh, how to prevent uh, this next generation uh, of young people who are dealing with uh, a lot of these mental health challenges and having them be in conversation together talking about solutions uh, is something we're all looking you know, forward to.
throughout our summit, we're going to be taking into consideration events over the past year that have affected and even harmed women um, and really trying to look for solutions and support women who have really stood up in the face of many challenges. Exactly. And Maggie, the event will wrap with an International Women's Day Awards Gala where we will take pause to honor some of our living icons. Take us through our award recipients this year. They are phenomenal. They have the most incredible stories, and we are so excited. So our Lifetime Achievement Award will go to Madam Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, the first democratically elected female head of state in all of Africa, the former president of Liberia. As Huma talked about, she's really paying her power forward. She has a foundation dedicated to fostering leadership among young women and girls, and we're going to be talking all about that and honoring that. And then speaking of young women and girls, our Young Changemaker Award will go to Shie Bastida, a young climate justice advocate and the co-founder of the Re-Earth Initiative. She's 21 years old. She's addressed COP. She's addressed the UN. She has galvanized Gen Z and organized a march of 300,000 people in the streets of New York City. So we will be talking to her about her work and hearing her call to action. Our wow. Know Your Value Award will be going to Shania Twain, five-time Grammy Award-winning artist, but also someone who has really had to fight to be accepted by the country music industry while also staying true to who she is. And she has said that she really wants to impart a message of confidence to young women and women of all ages, really, because that is something that she has had to learn and do within her own career. And then finally, we have our Torch of Freedom Award, and that is going to two recipients this year who are 70 years apart but have very similar stories of survival. Rabbi Eliza Erber is a Holocaust survivor and Nadia Murad is a Nobel laureate who survived the 2014 Yazidi genocide in Iraq. Both of these women have such profound stories of survival and are using their platforms to advocate for human rights and for religious tolerance and to make sure we can all understand what it means when we say never again. So I, mm. they have such incredible, every single person that I just mentioned have, has such leadership and resilience and persistence and we're going to hear so much from them and I'm so, so excited. Um, really quick before we go, I want to know what you're both most looking forward to at this year's event. Huma, I'll start with you. Well, you know, for me, it like feels like going home. You know, I grew up, grew up in that part of the world, and so that sense of community, the food, the culture, just surrounded in that environment. Can't wait to be in the desert uh, celebrating with everybody and, uh, you know, taking the moment of being, being in community. So uh, I think that's what first comes to my mind. Maggie. I'm really excited to interview Sheila Johnson. She's the co-founder of BET yeah. and for many years did not get credit for her work as a co-founder. And she has such incredible business acumen. She went on to found and lead Salamander Hotels and Resorts. I read her memoir recently and she has so much business advice to impart to our audience. But she also has a true personal story of resilience and overcoming a really toxic relationship and culture. So she told us that she wants to teach our audience all about learning learning from failure and being resilient. So I will have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her on stage. Nice. And then Huma and I will be co-moderating our town hall. And Sheila, along with some of the other women we've mentioned, will be our panelists. And that will be the opportunity for our attendees to pepper us with questions in real time. I love it. And I'm looking forward to all of it, everything. Huma Abedin and Maggie McGrath, thank you both very much. You'll be able to get full coverage of the 3050 Summit at knowyourvalue.com and Forbes.com in the days ahead, as well as plenty of content right here on Morning Mika, on Morning Joe, on YouTube, and on Peacock.